Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today I'm going to talk about a really special uh, series of nested roots. So first off, what is a nested root? It's basically an um, expression where there's a square root and there's square roots inside it. There's square roots nested inside other square roots. For example, square root of 2 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2. This square root is inside the next square root, which might be inside another square root, and so on. So um, today we're going to talk about, in particular, the sequence of nested roots, square root of 2. Well, square root of 2 itself is not very much of a nested root, but the next one certainly is. Square root of 2 plus square root of 2, and then square root of 2 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2, and then f with four twos and five twos and so on. So the first question we might ask ourselves is, does this sequence of nested roots converge to some value, or does it go to infinity, or what happens? To it as we continue the sequence up to infinity. Well, first we might want to consider whether it goes to infinity or goes to some fixed value. And in fact, this I can first show must go to some fixed value. So first off, what we notice is that this sequence is increasing because say we had square root of 2 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2, this third term in the sequence right here, the fourth term of the sequence can be done, can, can be obtained by adding a square root of 2 inside this last square root of 2. And if we add something positive inside there, then certainly the entire expression is going to increase as well. So this sequence is increasing. So this is, this is increasing sequence. And to prove that it approaches some value, we just need to prove that it's bounded from above. Because if it's an increasing sequence and it's bounded from above, then it must converge to some value. So what number can we use to bound this from above? Well, we can try to use the number 2. So let's suppose that we want to prove that square root of 2 plus square root of 2 plus dot 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 plus square root of 2, where um, uh, this square root happens n times, so let's call this the nth term of the sequence where there's n square roots. We want to prove that this is less than 2. And uh, well, let's in order to prove this, let's just try to ex like square both sides or something, try to simplify it a little bit. So we get that um, this is equivalent to 2 plus square root of 2 plus da 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 plus square root of 2 is less than, less than 4, which is equivalent to the square root of 2 plus da 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 plus square root of 2 is less than 2. But now this expression on the left hand side right here is equal to a n minus 1. So we see that we can actually use induction to prove that uh, this this a n is less than 2, because if we prove that a n minus 1 is less than 2, then it shows that a n is less than 2. So by induction, we just need to show that the base case is true, that square root of 2 is less than 2. But that's pretty obvious, because it rearranges to 2 is less than 4, which is clearly true. So now we know that this entire expression is bounded from above by 2. And since it's increasing, then it must converge to some value. So what is this fixed value? Well, since going through this entire induction step, um, everything seemed to work out quite nicely. You might suspect that the converging value is equal to 2. And indeed, we can show that this is actually converges to 2. Say it converges to some value s. And we have this infinite nested square root, where it just keeps on going forever. The fact that this nested square root keeps on going forever means that we can use we can utilize this in a very special way because if we take a look inside the square root the part after the square root of 2 plus this part is actually equal to s itself because again this is an infinite nested square root so it has some sort of self similarity inside it so actually we see that s is equal to square root of 2 plus s and this rearranges to s squared is equal to 2 plus s, which means that s squared minus s minus 2 is equal to 0, which means that s minus 2 times s plus 1 is equal to 0. 
Now clearly s can't be equal to 1 because this entire sequence is positive, or s can't be equal to negative 1, since the entire sequence is positive. So therefore s must equal 2, and that means this entire sequence of infinite, or this infinite sequence of nested square roots converges to the value 2. So now since we know that this converges to the value 2, here's a very interesting follow-up question. We know that the expression 2 minus root 2 plus root 2 plus da 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 plus root 2, where we have n square roots, this thing converges to 0 as n goes to infinity, because we already know that this expression right here converges to 2. But even though it converges to 0, perhaps if we multiply it by some sort of multiplier that varies with n, then, that, then this expression uh, might converge to some value other than 0 if we multiply it by some fast enough growing expression. And in fact, there does exist such an expression, such that if we multiply it with 2 minus root 2 plus root 2 plus da da da, as the number of square roots goes to infinity, the resulting expression converges to some value instead of going to 0. Some positive value, I should say. And that expression is 4 to the power of n, where n is the number of square roots. So n square roots. n square roots. So this expression actually converges to some value. So as n goes to infinity, this thing actually converges to some positive real number. And the question is, what is this positive real number? I'd like to leave this for the next video so you can post your guesses. If you solve it, you can keep quiet about it and uh, let other people have a go at the problem and I'm curious to see what you guys think. So I'll see you guys in the next video where I'll be explaining the solution to this problem. Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're gonna to do a number theory problem. Um, let a and b be co-prime integers, show that the equation ax squared plus by squared equals z cubed